For the past 30 years, anything that happened in Tehran was of, uh, of interest to me. I've been watching Tehran very closely from a distance, uh, you know, and, and hearing stories about this politician being assassinated or that politician being put in jail and then others uh, in exile. People I photographed. And so when the film Argo was uh, introduced, uh, I definitely wanted to see it. So we went to the premiere that night and it was the first time I got to see the film. And as much fun as it was, I did enjoy, I enjoyed good action films. Um, I was disappointed that they had been so loose with some of the facts because I know that films like this become historical documents rather than just movies. Uh, so in 30 years from now, people will look at this film as facts. And there, there were some embellishments and moving of the facts. For instance, there's a scene near the end of the film where they hold up a photograph of a, um, uh, a body suspended from a construction crane that had been hanged during the revolution. So at the end of the film, when they show the two photos, the one from the film and the actual photograph from the day, it gives you the impression this is a very factual film. It's a film based on facts. That body was there, but it was there a year before. Because I was in Tehran that week that Tony Mendez, played by Ben Affleck, arrived. And I'm sure if there had been a body hanging from a crane, I would have known about it and I would have had a picture as well. They here, they will be taken. Probably not alive. Some of the scenes in the movie were uh, irritating, but overall I did enjoy the film. And that's probably why it's getting a lot of attention now. This picture of Ken Taylor was taken in the, uh, his office and he gave us a sort of a lay of the land. He told us who was what, doing what and where uh, trouble had been in, in Iran. He showed us the map and it was a very interesting interview. About a week later I get a phone call at midnight. My office says uh, Prime Minister Joe Clark just announced in the House of Commons that Ken Taylor, our ambassador, has escaped with six Americans. It was a world story, not just a Canadian story. So I had to provide photos every day of everyday life in Iran. The embassy was a good place to be because every day there would be demonstrations. One of the funny things I, I noticed was that since the revolution was a year old already and the embassy had been seized uh, for two months, three months by now, I guess they had burnt all the American flags they could find in that country and they certainly were not importing them. So people had to manufacture, make their own homemade flags. And there was this huge uh, four or five foot flag and so it made a good picture. <laughs> that was kind of funny that uh, it was a homemade flag. Now, the man in charge, Ayatollah Rahola Khomeini, he was stashed away in some compound in uh, North Tehran. One day I heard that he was going to give an audience to a small group and when we got there, my friend coerced the guards at the gate and said, this man is our friend, he deserves to be here. Anyway, I got in and I got to photograph Ayatollah Khomeini my first and only time. He just wasn't accessible. So uh, I'm quite proud of my portrait of Ayatollah Khomeini. So I stayed in, um, in Tehran and covered the day-to-day -day story and then finally was allowed to go home <laughs> in uh, early January. I got as far as London when the office says, you must go back because the replacement photographer had been refused a visa. And they said at the same time, apply for a visa to go to Algiers because the hostage release is imminent and they'll probably go through Algeria on their way home. I went to Algeria, I was there about a week to 10 days, and finally the hostages arrived. And I tell you, it was so exhilarating to be standing there taking pictures of these Americans coming off the plane. This was the first time that they'd been freed in 444 days. And of course, I felt like a bit of a prisoner myself, being a prisoner to this story. This was the most stressful. It was the longest story I ever had to cover because I was in Iran twice for three month stints. So a total of six months of a year. It was a relief to get out when it was over. Uh, but I, you know, to me, it feels just like yesterday. It's a very fresh in my mind, all the details of that story. And so obviously when I saw the movie, I recognized the tone, although a lot of scenes were manufactured, but the tone was there.